Hey, this is Brian. I just want to have a quick discussion uh, for a few minutes about uh, asking you how prepared is your business for the coronavirus. Uh, this outbreak has really put uh, business continuity plans on the agenda of many leadership teams uh, across the nation. And, and technology uh, you know, has made it much easier for a lot of businesses to continue doing business. Uh, but there are many uh, businesses out there that are still find themselves uh, ill-prepared. So today I'm going to break down a couple items uh, that you need to think about as part of your continuity plan uh, in preparation for the coronavirus. Uh, first thing is working remotely. Uh, I think, I you know, we're already seeing that, that many companies and institutions are uh, allowing their employees or, or warning their employees to work from home. And, uh, you know, in the face of the outbreak, you know, this is definitely something that, uh, you know, is going to help out. Uh, you know, and I think most companies who have laptops and have issued laptops to their employees or maybe they're using desktop as a service or some other infrastructure are probably, uh, you know, in pretty good shape. Uh, most corporate laptops have endpoint security on them. They have the VPN software, uh, you know, and they carry with them all the security uh, and policies to, uh, to home. Uh, for many companies, they may not be as prepared. Uh, they may not have this technology. So, uh, you may be faced with allowing your uh, your employees to connect to the corporate network using their home PC, and and you know that's definitely not something that we recommend or encourage. But uh, you know, in light of the situation, that may be something you guys have to consider. And if you do, uh, you, know, you know, try to find a way to at least get uh, antivirus deployed to those machines, and also make sure that they do use VPN when connecting to your network. Uh, the second thing I had was communication. Uh, you know, we're advising, uh, you know, if you have your employees work from home that, uh, you know, if you're set up where you can, you have remote phones and hey, they can just take their phones home and plug it into their network and more than likely it'll work fine. But for most clients, we're just telling them to uh, forward their phones directly to, to their cell phone. This will ensure that any uh, phone calls they get uh, will be received over their cell phone and, uh, you know, hopefully they won't miss any calls and also they can uh, make sure their voicemail has appropriate message. Let them know they're working from home, you know, maybe delays getting back to whoever's calling them. Uh, another thing you need to think about communications with your employees. Um, you know, leadership teams need to find a good way to maintain communication with their remote workforce. Um, you know, either keep them abreast of, uh, you know, new developments uh, with the business, uh, maybe with uh, the situation with the coronavirus, uh, you know, and what the plans are. So, I um, highly encourage leadership teams to look at. Uh, platforms like Microsoft Teams or Slack. Uh, I know we use Slack internally here as an app you can put on your phone, app you can put on your desktop, and it really provides uh, an instant communication across our entire company uh, very quickly. It's become a great tool and an invaluable tool, especially uh, at times when we've had to work remotely. Uh, if you have cloud infrastructure, uh, you know, maybe you subscribe to Office 365, you know, there's a lot of great tools that that platform offers uh, especially for a remote workforce. So uh, uh, things like SharePoint allow you to sync and share files across uh, your employees who may be off-site. Uh, OneDrive is another great tool that you can use as well uh, to do that file and sync share. Also, uh, you got platforms like Microsoft Teams uh, that allow, uh, much like Slack, to, to uh, coordinate and collaborate with employees uh, almost in real time. Uh, and that can also be very useful when it comes to communication. Uh, and consequently, Microsoft is offering, uh, I, I believe, Office 365 uh, email and Microsoft Teams free of charge, I believe, for 60 days. So uh, if you're not using these platforms or maybe you don't subscribe to them, this may be a good time uh, to give it a try. And, uh, and it more than likely will may become part of your future business continuity plan. I think the next thing is you need to have a plan. You know, you need to meet with your leadership team. You need to talk about hey, how are we going to handle the next two weeks or how are we going to uh, communicate with our workforce um, if they're remotely, uh, you know, what does that look like for the company? And uh, you need to find out, you know, how you're going to have regular communications, how you're going to coordinate meetings, uh, but you need at least some kind of short-term plan uh, to where if you do send your workforce home that you can, uh, you can still uh, conduct business uh, and keep your workflows moving forward and also keep your communication with the vendors and customers and suppliers um, going as well. Uh, flexible leave policies. Uh, as we, we face this outbreak, uh, you know, I think it's a given that is, there's going to be some people that are going to get sick. And, uh, you know, employee, employers need to think about having flexible uh, policies in place, whether an employee gets sick on their own or, or maybe one of their loved ones gets sick. 
at least giving him the option uh, to take maybe some leave time. Uh, also, work, working remotely is, uh, you know, a great benefit. But uh, you need to, that goes back to having a plan. You know, make sure you, you set expectations well with your employees and also uh, help them understand what's, what they need, you know, how they need to communicate those situations and to whom within your organization. Talk a little bit about security. Um, you know, working, having a remote workforce brings a lot of different type of security concerns uh, into the equation. Uh, like I've said before, VPN uh, should always be used if you're going to access your LAN, uh, your corporate network. Uh, employees need to be uh, trained and also familiar with them how to connect their machines to VPN, uh, but and also making sure that they, uh, you know, still go by policies and procedures that are set forth the company, whether it be acceptable use or securing of data. Uh, you know, if you're HIPAA compliant, maybe you've got DOD, there, there are all kinds of things you need to think about uh, working remotely when it comes to security. Uh, another, another item that you really need to be very aware of is there are numerous phishing attacks going on right now that are trying to exploit this situation. Uh, you know, whether they're trying to sell uh, goods that are fake, uh, whether it be sanitation products, whether it be a cure, uh, whether it be, you know, whatever it may be, but there's a lot of scams going on right now. A lot of those scams are being delivered via email. Uh, there's also a lot of malicious sites that are being propped up. Uh, I've heard of several being, a, you know, a, a quote-unquote coronavirus tracker that is supposed to have the number of cases and where those cases uh, occur. So be careful about what websites uh, you visit. Also be extremely careful about uh, the emails that you get and be very uh, wary of any, I would say, uh, you know, un unexpected communications uh, about the coronavirus you know, uh, you know, if, if you need to know about it, go out to the CDC website, you know, work with your, you know, as an employer, you know, be uh, forthcoming with information uh, to your employees and give them places they can go to get, uh, you know, information from safe sources. And and lastly, uh, you know, web conferencing, virtual meetings are uh, probably a, are a great way uh, to help uh, maintain communication with your remote workforce uh, during this time. So um, I know internally we're going to be uh, we've got we've already got a meeting schedule, you know, as far as stand up meetings and weekly meetings. But, you know, as if we, you know, are at a point where we do work remotely, then, you know, the tempo of those meetings is probably going to increase. Now, we'll probably have, you know, we'll probably all dial in every morning and just do a quick check in. How's everybody doing? You know, what what work, you know, what needs to be done that day just to make sure everybody gets their day started off, uh, you know, at home, make sure there's no issues. So. Uh, as a leadership team, you need to think about how you're going to communicate your clients. Uh, you know, uh, we use Zoom internally, but, uh, you know, go to web, go to meeting, uh, Microsoft Teams. Uh, there's all types of different platforms that, uh, you know, you can use to help facilitate communication, uh, you know, even with employees, with customers, and with vendors uh, virtually. And, uh, and luckily, we live in an age where, you know, that's it's very accessible and also very easy to do. So... Uh, hopefully, these are some things you'll uh, you'll want to think about as you uh, look at your continuity plan, and, and maybe as you send your uh, your workforce home uh, to work remotely. Um, if you got any questions, feel free to contact us. Uh, let me know; be happy to help you out. We're uh, working with a lot of clients right now, uh, uh, setting up VPN connections, uh, you know, testing those connections out, testing out uh, remote access uh, to ensure our clients uh, can work remotely if needed. So, uh, please. Uh, Stay healthy, and, uh, and I'm sure we'll come out through this okay.